Sufi Kalmat or Spiritual Commandments. These are the Kalmats which are essential for the seekers along the path. Watchfulness is one of the most important aspect along the path. We live our life unconsciously like a robot. We move, we drive car. When we are returning home, are you certain that you are aware that you are driving? In most of the time it happens that mechanically our steering moves the car towards our residence. We eat food, we engage in our day-to-day -day activities but we are not aware of what we are doing. We are doing something and thinking of something else. Sri Aurobindo has explained this as physical mind. Physical mind is the mechanical mind. It develops in the child at a certain age. At another time, when time permits, I will explain these different aspects of the mind. Physical mind means we are doing things mechanically. We are driving, we are walking, we are thinking and all of a sudden there is a physical awareness that this lane or this street I have to turn. Sometimes there is all back in that as well and we miss our street but that happens rarely. Watchfulness means <coughs> None of your actions or thoughts should be without awareness. Buddha emphasized on watchfulness as the most important aspect for the seekers. Someone came to Buddha and asked, Sir, what is your way? Are you a philosopher or thinker or something else? Buddha said, I am a physician. I cannot show you the light, but I can give you the vision. With the vision, you will be able to see the light yourself. The philosopher again asked, what do you do? Buddha responded, we walk, we talk, we eat, we bathe, we do everything that is necessary for our life. At this, the philosopher replied, this is what we do as well. Buddha responded, how many of you are aware of what you are doing? Hadrat Ubaidullah Ayrar expressed the same thing in a slightly different terminology. How many of us are aware of what we are doing? When your actions, you are moving your hand, the words are coming out of you, are you aware of it? The moment you are aware of it, there will be no need to repent for those. Watchfulness is the most important aspect. My first radio program in 1989 began. That time there was a person who used to give her voice to the program because she was a professional radio announcer. The first program when I mentioned to her that I want to do a spiritual program and I will prepare a script and she will use this script. The first program was, do you know what is the most important act in our life is eating? And how do we eat our food? We have a platter full of delicious food in front of us. We have a morsel in our mouth next one in our hand and our eyes are fixed on what is on the platter. She asked me, is this I mean by spiritual program? I said, yes, this is the beginning of the spiritual program. This was sowing the seeds of awareness. And 20 years after she told me, now she realized that was a spiritual program. This is how we live our life. We have gone to the restaurant, the food 
is served and it is in front of us on the table and it is the food that is before us on the table can satiate us but that time we remain talking about something else and we very much engage in talks you know last time when we went to new york and we visited that restaurant the food was very good or next time when we are traveling i will take you to that restaurant things like these happen on day to day basis in that we miss what is in front of us and this is living unconscious we are not doing anything consciously there was an incident i have heard about a zen master a disciple was staying with the master learning awareness but he could not pick up what was the essence of it the disciple complained that i have been here for so long but i have not been able to progress at this the master said i would send you to one of my friend he lives nearby he is the owner of a guest house he will not say anything to you you have to observe his behavior and you can learn from him what you could not from me happily the disciple rushed down to the guest house to the place and to the guest house precisely on reaching there he realized that the owner of the guest house was no master instead an ordinary person who was managing a guest house he thought that the master wanted to get rid of me so he sent me here but he again remembered the words of the master that this person will not say anything to you but you have to observe his behavior so the owner of the guest house said i do not know anyone by that name the master and i am no master instead i am the owner of this guest house but since you are here and night is approaching better you stay and tomorrow you will go back so he saw what activities the owner was engaged in and in the night afterwards he went to sleep next morning when he got up he remembered the words of the master that the he will not say anything but you have to observe so he asked him what did you do yesterday he said after the day's work was finished i washed the wares cleaned the guest house and then peacefully i went to rest because now all the wares are washed the place is clean and what did you do in the morning he said when i got up I rinse those wheels and now everything is in order even in in activity the pots gather dust even in in activity the pots gather dust he came back returned to the master and complained the master said you did not pick up what was necessary when he said even in in activity the pots gather dust mind is a pot during interaction with the objects and beings it continues to gather dust and dross that goes on accumulating in the absence of watchfulness or in the absence of awareness and then it becomes difficult another master said if you are finished with the last meal of the day go and wash your plate if you are finished with the last meal of the day go and wash your plate that is the end of meditation that is what meditation is all about that is what watchfulness is all about a very simple words what happens the mind is a pot where constantly things are brewing in the form of thoughts in the form of emotions in the form of desires one desire is not even fulfilled another arises 
while you are trying to fulfill this particular desire many mushroom so when he said if you have finished the last meal go and wash your pot when you realize that you have come to the end of the desires then your journey of meditation can begin you reach to the point where mind comes to cessation this is the meaning of the word wakufe waku added three more kalmas to the one that was given by hazrat ibn khali gizwani radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu wakuf actually means a temporal pause and this pause he explained is of three types wakufe jamni means when there is awareness related to time keeping account of how one is spending one's time you are walking on the road why do i have to pay when i will finish everything and i am going to the mosque i will offer my evening prayer no there is no time for prayer your each incoming and outgoing breath should be soaked in the awareness of allah subhanahu wa taala you have to be aware because any moment the breath that comes in may not go out or the breath that is out may not come in the very important aspect of the seekers in world journey is breath watchfulness there was a sufi master george ivanovich gurjiev he was of an armenian descent he lived in major part in new york and when after the passing away of george gurjiev his biographer leon leford went to the middle east to many of the masters in search of the masters of gurjiev and he met one person different masters said, what did you teach gurjiev the master said i taught him how to breathe leon exclaimed breathe the master said do you know how to breathe the breath that is devout of the name of allah subhanahu wa taala is death each breath that is why hazrat shah bahauddin naqshband razi allah taala uno said of his master hazrat amir kalal razi allah taala uno that is every breath was soaked in the name of allah subhanahu wa taala each every moment a circumstance a situation comes when you have to be thankful whether rightly you have to remember that your every moment you are walking you have to meet someone in the office all of a sudden a situation comes when anger may come in that time remembering allah subhanahu wa taala being aware of this everyone is an instrument along the path the moment we realize this it is the existence of allah subhanahu wa taala that does everything through each one of us as an instrument and gives you the opportunity to come close to him through your awareness or depart from him keeping a count of how one is spending one's time whether rightly and if so give thanks or wrongly and if so ask for his forgiveness according to the act verily the good deeds of righteousness are the iniquities of those who are near to god this is <coughs> wakufe jamni wakufe adbi this is a numerical pause awareness that is related to numbers you have to check that the heart zikr that is said in the heart silently has been repeated the requisite number of times taking into account one's wandering wavering thoughts Hazrat Shah Bahauddin Naqshband Razi Allah Ta'ala Abno considered numerical awareness as the first stage of 
the esoteric awareness of the Sufis. On the contrary, if you are aware of each breath that comes in and that goes out, then this becomes irrelevant. But for the seekers, you have to focus on the numbers. How many of your breath has been soaked in the remembrance of Allah SWT? And when this continues, then all of a sudden you realize that this awareness, this remembrance continues as an undercurrent. You are doing everything but deep down there is this awareness, the remembrance of Allah SWT. This is called Wakufe Adbi. The last of this is Wakufe Kalbi. Wakuf means pause, Kal means heart. Awareness related to the heart. In this, the seeker forms a mental image of one of the hearts with the name of Allah engraved thereupon. To emphasize that the heart has no consciousness or goal other than that of the goal, other than Allah SWT. This is the meaning of the word Naqshband. Hazrat Shah Bahauddin Naqshband was potter by profession. He used to make pots and on those pots he used to draw intricate designs of his spiritual awareness. At this, his Sheikh, Hazrat Amir Kalal Razilatalauna said, You are becoming Naqsh, you are making Naqsh. This is an ordinary act. He was doing the pottery, making the pots for the, as the part of his living. But he transformed his living, brought his awareness into the action. The understanding, the name of Allah SWT in our in our actions. And unless your thought becomes your action, you are not on the path as yet. What it is not important what you do. It is important how you do what is the awareness continuing underground as an undercurrent while you are performing day-to-day -day activities. I remembered an incident in the life of my Nana Hazrat Sheikh Brij Mohanlal Razil At a time there was three masters, Hazrat Ram Chandra Zilla Talaunu, Hazrat Raghwadayal Razil Talaunu, the younger brother of Sheikh Lalaji, and his nephew, Sheikh Brij Mohanlal Razil Talaunu. So it happened that two Sheikh Brij Mohanlal and Sheikh Raghwadayal Razil Talaunu was living in the same city of Kanpur in India. One day, one of the disciples of Sheikh Raghwadayal Razil Talaunu got a problem in his eyes. So he heard of a Hakim Ji, the Indian doctor, who is well versed in the alternate medicine, went to him, he saw his eyes and gave him the medicine. Next day, another fellow disciple got a similar problem. He also went. This time, the doctor got a little concerned and he saw it. There was a little inquisitiveness in his eyes and he gave him the medicine. Third or fourth day another seeker developed a similar problem he went. When the third seeker went, the doctor said, I am not going to give you the medicine. First of all, you tell me where do you go? These eyes seem to be wounded seem to be in love with someone. At this the three said, we are an elderly person, we are not in love. He said, no, these eyes say that they are in love with a shape. These eyes are wounded by the love of a shape. 
and unless you tell me the name of your sheikh i am not going to give you the medicine because i want to meet him it seems in your khanka every one's eyes are made in the same the same kind of depth the same kind of thirst the same kind of inquisitiveness is i have seen in the eyes of all three of you but they have been instructed not to give the name of his sheikh so he came back very happy thinking that it is something very great about my master when they mentioned to sheikh raghwar de alwazi latala uno he said no 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 don't tell my name instead he said tell the name of sheikh brij mohan lal razi latala uno so next day when they went they told him that the name of my Sheikh is Sheikh Brijmohan Lal Razi Latala Uno, and he works in police office, a place that is considered to be the most correct. Works in the police office as a head clerk. So he said he will go and visit the sheikh. So these three were very anxious to know what is the impression of this doctor who was also had the Sufi inclination. about my master so the next time when they visited they were anxious to know about his impressions eagerly they asked him did you meet my sheikh he said yes i went to see him he said did you meet him he said no they got more inquisitive how come that you went to meet him and you did not meet he said yes i went to see him i remained for one hour behind his chair thinking that if his one breath is free from the name of yaad e ilahi from the remembrance from the watchfulness of allah subhanahu wa taala i could pay my respect to him it seemed he was so busy that he was doing the office work apparently as you all can see as if he will finish the entire work of the office in a day's time but not even a single incoming or outgoing breath was free from the name of allah subhanahu wa taala on each breath there was the remembrance there was the zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala yaad e ilahi watchfulness remembrance awareness it was there on each breath i remained there one hour waiting maybe one breath may be free then i can pay the respect when someone is in the thoughts of allah subhanahu wa taala the adab says that we must not pay respect to him but you watch what happens in your office mechanically we go on saying good morning 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 like that we keep on passing through the corridor whether anyone pays attention to your words or not it is not important but we taught to be respectful mechanically are you respectful and does your respect has any trace of awareness in it to me so when they heard these three people felt very happy that their master is such a great man when they reached and it happened they mentioned it to sheikh brijmohan lal the ego was surfacing at this it is the responsibility of the master to curb that instantaneously he said what did you do why you didn't inform me that this person is going to visit me and what would he be thinking about me that i was so disrespectful that he remain standing behind me for one hour and i did not pay attention to him then a meeting was arranged between two of them and they met the most important aspect of this incident that i remember and my purpose of mentioning to you is what is the essence of these kalmas how much of these have become part of your day to day life how much awareness has come into you how many of your actions how many the numbers 
How many of your actions are soaked into awareness? And how much of your time is spent really in the company of the remembrance of sick? You see in the mosque, little children are learning to do read the scriptures and they are vigorously shaking their the upper part of the body while reading or reciting the holy scriptures or doing the zikr. We are all taught to be mechanical and we consider this as part of our spiritual austerity. When it is spontaneously springing from deep within, then it is awareness. You are not making any effort, yet still it is happening. Then not even a single breath of yours is free from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the essence of Sufi Kalmah.